What is also interesting for us to remember is that after January, in February, that somewhere around the middle of February, there was a, ce uh, there was a celebration that was known in, by the ancient Romans as the Lupercalia. And the Lupercalia was a, a ceremony, and Luper means wolf. And they depicted a wolf chasing a little girl. And so they had a ceremony. I'm not making this up, by the way, right? If you want to, you can look this up. If you don't believe me, go to the encyclopedia right after we're finished. A children's encyclopedia. Look up Valentine's Day, Easter, Christmas, and Halloween, and you'll find everything I'm talking about. Okay? You want to go deeper into it, go on the internet. Okay? And look up the pagan roots of all of these holidays. And so, the, Luperca the Lupercalia was the celebration of the wolf. And the authorities there would gather together young people and they would put their names into a box, men and women, and they would take out the names and whoever was your partner, whoever you, you picked, whatever name you picked was your partner for the day and all types of sexual activity went on during that day. They were totally out of control. That is the Lupercalia. That's what it really means, okay? Now, around February 14th, around 270 AD, of the Christian era, a bishop by the name of Valentine. He was trying to work with the Roman soldiers because the Roman emperor um, had imposed upon his soldiers that anybody who joined the army could not get married. Because if you got married, you're thinking about your wife all the time, and you're a useless soldier. But the soldiers wanted to get married, so Saint Valentine worked with them, and he was captured by the Roman emperor he was imprisoned and he was beheaded. And so a legend formed around St. Valentine's Day. In one case, it said he even helped a blind young girl. He was trying to help her get married. And so she wrote a note and it was found in his jail cell to my Valentine. And so from that date, somebody making that compromise brought together the two streams. And so now you have Valentine's Day. So on that occasion, and it's in the, the school system, if, if, if Muslims are sending their children to school, you got a problem on Valentine's Day. Because they make them do Valentine's cards. In some cases, it becomes mandatory in some classes. Now they even have in Canada, I don't know about here, you can buy a Valentine's Day card, somebody will come and sing, or somebody will bring food, and you know, they make it very lavish. And so what happens is young people are forced together on that occasion. And for those who are part of the monotheistic tradition, who understand that, that the relationship between men and women should be done in a sacred way within marriage, and not in a loose way before marriage. And we see what is happening in the society itself. We see what has happened to the standards, even in, in the White House. So we understand what is going on in the society. That's because people have lost their limits. The hudud, the limits have been broken up. And so those who are maintaining the limits in the monotheistic religions and in those people of consciousness recognize that St. Valentine's Day is really part of a pagan holiday where people are carrying out the so-called wishes of Venus or Aphrodite, their little son called Cupid. And he shoots you with an arrow. You know that story? He shoots you with an arrow and you fall hopelessly in love. And some Muslims say, I want to get married, I'm in love. You're in love, what is love, man? There is kafa'a. In fiqh there is kafa'a, suitability. Yes, there should be an attraction between husband and wife. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, spoke about the, 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 the beauty, about wealth, about genealogy, right, Nasab, And about deen. And he said, marry people for their religion, for their deen, their taqwa. That is the basis of the marriage. And so, St. Valentine's Day is another time that we have to take a stand. And we can ha we'll have a question and answer period at the end, but the position we are taking is the young people should have nothing to do with Valentine's Day. You have to step out of that completely. In Christmas, another problem faces us. What do you do? Do you give presents? Do you take presents? What do you do? Are you involved? One of the, one of the, one of the greatest benefits after my belief in Allah, in, in accepting Islam, 
was when Christmas season came, and as a Muslim, we don't give any gifts. And Christmas even came, we said, Alhamdulillah. At that time, we have another way of, of, of expressing ourselves uh, during that season. And so Muslims should not be involved. In some cases, if the person is your neighbor or somebody and they give you a gift, the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepted gifts. So it is possible to, an accept, uh, to accept a gift as long as you're not involved in the ritualistic uh, parts of the occasion. But if you want to give a gift, give it at another time during the year. So they understand that we have other things. We have our Eid. We have other times. Let them un invite them for food during the Eid al-Adha. Give them something at that time. Give sadaqah at different points in time. 